More snow on the way to central and eastern Kentucky. Historically cold numbers may follow that up. I've got the full forecast on the way. We are tracking road conditions around Lexington as crews clean up main roads and start tackling those side roads. And firefighters battling cold and snow as they try to put out an intense house fire in Lexington. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 5. Good afternoon to you. We had a break from the snow, but it is not going to last long. And there's more snow on the way tonight and tomorrow. And behind that, we have history making cold weather coming. It's another WKYT First Alert Severe Weather Day, and we begin with an update on the forecast from Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey. Yeah, these severe weather days just keep rolling on. Uh, right now, we may keep this going through the weekend. More snow and record cold, as you guys were talking about. Here's a quick breakdown. Snow arrives late tonight into Wednesday on the tune of two to four inches into most of central and eastern Kentucky. Those winds tomorrow, very gusty. So we're going to blow some of that snow around. Some small drifts may even try to develop. Keep in mind, you've got a lot of snow already on the ground, and it's a powdery snow. Same with tomorrow's snow, very powdery out there, and lows by Thursday morning. Minus 10 to minus 15 degrees, if not colder. I think Friday morning, by the way, is even colder than that. Here's your winter weather advisory for the entire bluegrass state of Kentucky. Live first alert defender, clean and calm for now. Nearest snowflakes from the Cincy area up toward Dayton and back into Indianapolis. That's just the leading edge of our system that is still to the northwest of us. Little round of some light snow trying to work toward far western Kentucky. Throw the clouds into the mix because I want to show you this system that is diving across parts of KC right now. What's going to happen with that is it's going to slide almost due eastward along Interstate 64 into the day tomorrow. So that little Arctic system that is right along that front moves in here late tonight through tomorrow, and that is likely to produce a uh, pretty decent swath of some snows into most of central and eastern Kentucky to the tune of two to four inches. So your winter weather impact for Wednesday. Travel, it's going to go downhill again in a hurry. So right as we start to see a little pavement out there, we're going to cover it up again later tonight into tomorrow as snow, two to four inches most areas will combine with Arctic cold temperatures tumbling in and gusty winds that may create some blowing and drifting snow. We could see wind gusts tomorrow, guys, approaching 30 to 35 miles per hour. But it's the record cold that comes in behind this that will get your attention and it should get your attention. We'll talk about the latest computer forecast numbers, and I'll show you where my numbers are in just a few minutes. Thank you, Chris. And once again, schools across the region have canceled classes tomorrow, including Fayette County. Fayette County schools are closed. Remember, you can find a full list of the closings on WKYT.com. Mayor Jim Gray just wrapped up a news conference late this afternoon to update us on the response to the snow. And the good news is the situation is improving all over. WKYT's Jordan Belines is live in downtown Lexington with more on what the mayor had to say. Jordan? That's right. Now, some of the main message that messages that were spoken about during today's press conference included the fact that the city is making progress. As you can see, road conditions are improving and the number of accidents is currently down. Now, because road conditions are getting much better, police will no longer be transporting hospital workers and other emergency personnel as of 11 o'clock tonight. Now, so far today, there have been zero injury accidents, 29 non injury accidents, and 160. Motorist assists, which is down from the 470 motorist assists reported yesterday. And while not all streets are clear, city officials say road crews are continuing to work on a priority list in terms of what roads they plow first. And although the streets are looking better, the mayor is still urging drivers to be careful out there, especially tonight, just in case black ice becomes a problem. Live in Lexington, Jordan Valines, WKYT. Jordan, thank you. Well, the break that we saw today from the snow gave road crews a chance to catch up on some plowing. In addition to touching up main roads, they finally moved on to those snow routes on side roads as well. WKYT's Miranda Combs is live in the Hamburg area with a look at road conditions this afternoon. Good afternoon to you, Miranda. Good afternoon, Amber. You can see the difference from here. If you look down there, that is man of war. Everything's running smoothly down there, but up here, it is a slick mess. That is the result of a big snow. John Criswell is just trying to get where the sidewalk ends. Well, I wish uh, they were able to come push it away. It would help me get in and out of my driveway. 
He, like road crews, are dealing with day two of a winter storm that dumped more snow than Chris Well <sighs> seen in the 10 years he's called this house home. In my our 10 years here, yes, that's the most snow. Chriswell's home, like most, is positioned on a neighborhood street, a slick, snowy leftover from yesterday. And roads like this are Rob Allen with Streets and Roads Focus today. He says the downside of a big snow is his crew has to push it to the side, which tends to block neighborhood entrances looking like a barricade. It's an unfortunate uh, side effect of pushing snow, especially as much as we got. And it creates a, uh, a berm that makes it kind of hard to get to the main road from the secondary road. And uh, what we're doing as crews are out there today trying to clean up those intersections and open up those access points. And throughout the day, a mix of sun and salt and plows is helping. And shovels, in Criswell's case. With this amount of snow, you have to take it easy uh, so you don't overexert yourself. Actually, right before our live shot, a large SUV was stuck right there and just got its way out right before our live shot started. But this is a perfect example of what you're going to see all over Lexington on these side roads. This is a visual example of what you will see if you head out on the roads and what it's going to be like for the next day or so. We're live in Lexington, Miranda Combs, WKYT. Thank you, Miranda. Firefighters had to battle cold and snow while they fought a house fire. The fire happened on Wallingford Court at around 11:30 this morning. This is video of the scene from Sky First, showing just how intense that fire was. WKYT's Garrett Weimer shows us what it took to put the flames out. The road here on Wallingford Court is still a snowy mess, and that's just another challenge firefighters had to face as they battled a fire at a home here. Home is a fire. Crews say the fire started around noon in the back room of the home. Smoke and flames could be seen for miles. Three people inside the home at the time were able to get out safely, but the homeowner tells us they also had 11 cats and dogs, and sadly, they think only eight of their pets got out safely. Firefighters say the snowy side roads made it tougher for them to respond to the fire, and it also made it tougher once crews started fighting the fire. We've got, you know, hose lines and waterways that, that we've got to, you know, take to make sure that those didn't frozen up. Plus, our folks are cold, and we've got our our rehab unit out here, which has got heat and it's got some warm beverages, and, and we've got some food coming out for the folks here in just a little bit. So uh, to try to exchange some crews out so we can get folks back to the station and get them warmed up, and uh, you know, for for the next one, I guess. Just another note, we're told the home had a metal roof, which firefighters say also made it harder for them to put out the fire. In Lexington, Garrett Weimer, WKYT. The firefighters don't know right now what caused that fire. It has certainly been a day of digging out, and that was the case in Danville. The Boyle County community received nearly a foot of snow. Today, main roads have started to clear, and services are being restored. WKYT's Phil Pendleton shows us the cleanup there. The sun, snow plows, and salt have all resulted in roads like this one looking more like their normal selves, but not all is, of course, back to normal here. It's going to take a while for all of the snow to go away. Boyle County's hey. Emergency Management Director says the EOC Emergency Operations Center was activated. And he tells me they are using four wheel drive vehicles to get medical people into work who live out in remote areas. In Danville, many of their residential streets are still snow covered, and for those who live here, Digging their cars out was quite a task. It's not devastating to me because I'm, I mean, I, I like stuff like this. If it's going to come, it's going to come. It's the lowest work, and then you can do about it. And as I was driving through Danville today, I did notice a lot of people out shoveling their driveways. Coming up at 6 o'clock, I'll tell you and show you about the huge random act of kindness by some members of the Center College football team. For now, in Boyle County, Phil Pendleton, WKYT. And again, emergency officials are urging people not to go out unless you have to. History is online tonight for the Wildcats as they face Tennessee. This is pretty amazing. They have a chance to start the season 26 and 0, something that no other UK basketball team has ever done. WKYT's Lee K. Howard has a preview of a potentially record-setting game from Knoxville tonight. One of the greatest things about the Big Blue Nation is the way the fans travel to watch their Wildcats. And of course, the trip to Knoxville is always a popular one, just given the close proximity from Lexington to Knoxville. But with the tough weather over the last day or so, some of the fans may choose not to make the trip to Knoxville. I will tell you, we made the trip relatively easy, but associate head coach Kenny Payne knows 
it could make for an even tougher road environment tonight against the Tennessee Vols. We, we need our fans. That's a big part of us on the road. Everywhere we've been, uh, other than one or two places, our fan support has been great. I, I certainly hope uh, that our fans will come out. I understand the concerns about the weather. and uh, This game's probably as important to our fans as any game we play all year, so I'm, uh, I'm pretty sure they'll find a way to make it, and, and hopefully it'll keep a few Kentucky fans back in Lexington. I will tell you it's cold. It's a little bit frigid out here outside of Thompson Bowling Arena, but we did see a few Wildcat fans along I-75 making their way right here to Knoxville to cheer on the Wildcats and potentially witness history tonight with a 26th win to start the season. Just outside of Thompson Bowling Arena, Lee K. Howard, WKYT. And after tonight, UK is back on the court Saturday when Auburn comes to Rupp Arena. Follow WKYT online at WKYT.com. Join the conversation on Twitter and become a part of the WKYT Facebook family. Here's a look at the most discussed stories on our website right now. In addition to the weather situation, people are talking about a bill to put religion back in schools, a West Virginia train derailment, and an abortion-related bill that cleared the Kentucky Senate. You can join the conversation on WKYT.com. New details today about a Kentucky teen suspected of killing his entire family. Police say 16-year-old Jason Hendricks shot and killed his mother, father, and sister in Corbin last week. He died in a shootout with police in Baltimore, Maryland, Saturday. Today, Baltimore County Police said they found five handguns, a shotgun, and a backpack of ammunition in Hendricks' car. Two of the weapons were loaded. The officer Hendricks shot before he died has been released from the hospital. Police have arrested a father after finding his three year old out in the cold alone. Christian Lowe is charged with wanton endangerment. Police say he left his apartment on Larkin Road for just a few minutes and when he returned, the girl was gone. According to an arrest report, it was only nine degrees when officers arrived. They say they've responded to the apartment for the same type of incident four times. Winter weather shut down the federal government today. About five inches of snow fell in Washington, D.C. The deep freeze extends all over the East Coast. In New York, a frozen pipe burst and sent a light fixture crashing to the floor. Waterways around the city are also full of chunks of ice. Well, with 10 inches or sometimes more in some places of snow here on the ground, digging out is going to be a real challenge. It can be backbreaking. If you're not careful, it can be dangerous. WKYT's Kristen Kennedy shows us how to stay safe while shoveling snow. Well, we sure can't measure the snow on the roads today, but we can measure the amount of snow in people's driveways. A lot of families are trying to dig out. You try to clear this up and then. Get this and then try to help some of the older neighbors, but it just feels like a lot. Victoria Means and husband Clemente not only cleared their own sidewalks and driveway Tuesday morning, but also their neighbors. And he had to go to work, so. And I got called off work, so might as well do something positive today. UK healthcare leaders want to make sure that something positive doesn't turn into a negative. They say cold temperatures and physical exertion can increase your risk of heart attack when you're shoveling snow. You got to take breaks, you know, go about 30, 20 or 30 minutes and take a 10 or 15 minute break so you can stay fresh. If you experience shortness of breath or chest or upper body discomfort, Doctors say stop shoveling. Just do it for a little bit and then go inside because your hands get really, really cold and you get out of breath really quickly. A lot of people say they don't have to go to work today. They don't have to be anywhere in particular, but they are trying to shovel as much as possible as long as the sun is out. In Lexington, Kristen Kennedy, WKYT. It uh, really raises your heart rate. Doctors recommend that anyone older than 55 or relatively inactive should be especially careful shoveling. And no one with heart trouble should shovel unless they have their doctor's permission. It's a favorite snow day activity, a lot of fun. While sledding can be fun, it can also turn dangerous. One of the biggest threats is the cold. Firefighters say you need to bundle up no matter how long you plan to be outside. That's why we ask people to just bundle up, even if you're going out for a short stint, bundle up because uh, it can set in quicker than people think. So uh, try to keep the hands covered, face covered, you know, extremities, everything, because it, it, it can come in pretty quick and you don't want to have to deal with frostbite.
No, you don't. And to avoid injuries, pick a hill that isn't too steep and has a long, flat area where you can glide to a stop. You want to avoid hills ending near a street, a parking lot, a pond, a tree, or a fence.